When your Joy-Cons are too small, make your own. Sweet. Hey guys, Devin from Decon here, and I love the Nintendo Switch, but I've always hated the Joy-Con controllers. Now, don't get me wrong, the Joy-Con controllers are an amazing piece of hardware, and I love their overall aesthetic design. It's just I've always found them to be a bit uncomfortable whenever I use them in portable mode. And the buttons were a bit on the smaller side as well, and I've always wished that Nintendo released a larger pro version of these controllers. Well, it turns out that Hori, which is a third-party accessory maker, has granted my wish. They have just released a larger pro version of these controllers for handheld mode, and it's called the Split Pad Pro. Split Pad Pro. Say that three times fast. Split Pad Pro, Split Pad Pro, Split Pad Pro, Split Pad Pro. Split Pad Pro, Split Pad Pro. Now overall, the Split Pad Pro is very minimal in its overall design, and it just comes in this kind of basic black, and it has red accents on the joysticks themselves. Now the top part of the Split Pad Pro has a very smooth feel to it. And flipping the controller over, we can see that this portion here where your fingers wrap around is nice and textured. Also on the back here, you can see there's an extra button labeled FR and FL. I'll get to these in just a second. Now unlike the original Joy-Con controller which has a flat back to it, the Hori Split Pad Pro actually has this rounded back to it and it's nice and contoured which allows your fingers to wrap around it which allows for increased overall grip and comfort. And the buttons are obviously larger but they also have a deeper key travel when compared to the original Joy-Con and overall they just feel much more satisfying to push. The joysticks themselves are also much larger and they actually have a greater axis of rotation which should increase the overall accuracy while gaming. And Hori's actually added a few unique buttons here that aren't on any of the original Nintendo controllers. The first one is a turbo button, and the second one is an assign button. Okay, let's talk about the turbo button real quick. The turbo button is, a, is an assignable button that you can actually perform actions multiple times without actually hitting that specific button. So to explain this a little bit better, let's hold up an example. So in Mario Super Odyssey, if I wanted to continuously throw my hat, I would assign the turbo button to the hat throwing action, and when I activate this turbo button, then Mario will continuously throw his hat. And I don't have to hit any other buttons, as long as this turbo button is activated, Mario will continuously throw his hat until I deactivate that function. Now this is something I honestly will never use myself, I'm not kind of a competitive gamer, I don't have any interest in having an action repeat itself. But it's nice that it's there in case I ever want to play around with it. Okay, let's look at the assign button real quick. You remember those buttons on the back of the controller, the FR and FL buttons? These are the buttons that you can actually assign a function to. Okay, let's say I wanted to use this back button to jump in Mario Odyssey. I just have to press the jump button and this assign button at the same time until this LED lights up. And now whenever I press this rear button, Mario is going to jump as long as this assign button is activated. And as much as I love the Hori Split Pad Pro, it's not a perfect controller and there are some negatives to having this as well. So my first negative is the overall construction of the controllers itself. They're constructed from plastic, and while it's I think, a very durable plastic, it still feels very, very cheap. And my second negative is the way these actually fit on the Switch itself. Even though these are an official licensed product from Nintendo, they don't fit perfectly on the Switch. And by that, I mean it doesn't perfectly align with the Switch itself. There's actually a quarter inch kind of gap between the top of the Switch itself and the top of the controller, and it just doesn't sit flush. And this doesn't affect the overall function of the controllers, it just kind of bothers my OCD-ness and it just doesn't look very very clean. My last and final negative with the Hori Split Pad Pro is actually the overall button layout. Now don't get me wrong, it's about 90% perfect, but at the very bottom of the Split Pad Pro we still have the store and capture button on each side of the controllers. If you look at the layout of the Nintendo's Pro Controller, you'll see that these buttons are repositioned above the thumbstick and are more accessible to your thumbs. Comparing this to the original Joy-Cons, these buttons are below the thumbstick and these are placed here mainly because there's no room above the thumbstick because the controllers are so cramped. Now, looking at the Hori Split Pad Pro, there's plenty of space above the thumbstick for these buttons. And I wish these buttons were just kind of repositioned above the thumbstick and it just it would make for an overall kind of more comfortable experience and it would make the Split Pad Pro perfect. And despite all those negatives, I really still love this controller from Hori. And if you're like me and you've been looking for a kind of pro 
controller option when using your Switch in handheld mode, I think you're really gonna like the Split Pad Pro from Hori. It really is a fantastic controller. Well, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please send me your likes. If you enjoy my content, send me your subs. And as always, thank you for stopping by. I'll see you next time.